Hi, my name is Inge, coming to you from Inge's Knitting Lab in Denmark. In these podcasts, I share my passion for knitting and my new learnings on techniques and designs. So if you're new, welcome. If you're a returning viewer, welcome back. Lovely to see you all. In this episode, I talk about only one product today. So this will be kind of a different episode. And these are the slippers from Sandness called Doublet Tüffler in Norwegian. And uh, how come I talk about only one project today? Yeah, for one, these uh, uh, slippers seem to be popular among my friends. I've been asked to knit more of those. So they are, yeah, I think they are, look re- very nice and they are very nice and functional uh, wear. And second and uh, first and foremost, I would say when I started uh, knitting those, I had absolutely no clue what was up and down in this design. Um, so I thought, well, there might be someone else out there needing a helping hand to talk about step by step from choosing the yarn to cast on to knitting until you have the final shoe. Um, So yeah, I have some exciting news for you and good news because Sandness Yarn has now translated this pattern into English. So I have the link for you in the description box below. However, they do not tell you how to felt the the slippers. So they tell you the measurements of the knitted uh, shoe and the felted one. But what happens in between, you have to figure out by yourself. So I have not tried this before, so I had to explore and figure out what is felting, which factors influences felting and what to do. So in the, you could call it part two of this episode, uh, step eight, I will walk you through what I did step by step and share uh, my learnings with you. Yeah, before we get started, let me show you which tools uh, are good to have at hand. So we need a yarn suited for felting. I use this Drops Alaska. It, its uh, color is uh, gray blue and uh, some needles. I use two sets of needles on wires. The one being longer than the other, uh, allowing for the magic loop technique. And uh, double pointed needles to define the toe. Some stitch markers are inevitable. And definitely a measurement tape because a lot of measuring to do on, on the way. Uh, For washing, uh, besides my washing machine, you can see it later on in the video, I use this uh, soap. It's not just wool soap, but it's without enzymes. And I used uh, one eighth of a cup, uh, which corresponds to 30 millimeters, no, 30 milliliters, if you're more into the metric system, just like me. And then uh, shoe blockers. They are quite nifty, but of course you don't need them. You can use your hands or other things at hand to block out the shoe and make it fit your feet. So I guess we have now what we need to get started. Step one, which yarn to choose? The pattern recommends a yarn uh, which holds uh, 77 yards per 50 grams, corresponding to 70 meters per 50 grams. And uh, they use Fritz's Garn, a a base from their own uh, brand, Sandness. I didn't have this yarn at hand, so I chose this Alaska from Drops instead. It has exactly the same uh, yardage as uh, Fritz Garn. And uh, yeah, the most important thing when choosing yarn, of course, is that it is recommended or um, good for felting. And this this is uh, also good for felting. So I thought, well, I'll use this one. 
the next thing is the gauge so the, the yarn uh, or the pattern recommends a gauge of 15 stitches per 4 inches or 10 centimeters and uh, using a needle size of five and a half millimeters which corresponds to a us9 um, but in order for me to get gauge with this yarn i had to use a needle size of six millimeters a us size 10. so this worked for me the pattern does not uh, tell you the row gauge of the pattern and the pattern is written kind of in rows at row this you do this and and need so many rows i can calculate the row gauge from the pattern and figure it out i haven't done it uh, however i just uh, yeah used uh, the one and expect it to be kind of the same due to the same yardage of this yarn step two the cast on uh, First of all, let's look at the different sizes here. Um, I've put them into an Excel sheet for you to have the overview of all the sizes. I find it very helpful so that you can see which is the size of the, of the knitted shoe and the final size of the felted shoe. And uh, I'm here aiming for a size uh, 37, which corresponds to a size six and a half in US sizes and five and a half in UK sizes. So um, I've added in also the conversion chart for, for the other, for, for US sizes in other countries. Okay. Um, where were we? Yeah. So as I aim for a size 37, I should cast on 76 stitches. And as I said, I had to use a size uh, six millimeter needle, which is a size 10 in, in US sizing. When defining the height of your uh, slipper, it's of course, uh, I say of course, but it wasn't that obvious to me when I started because it was turning all around for me with this design. But the total number of, of stitches will design the height of your heel. And uh, I want it, or I want the heel to be a bit higher uh, uh, on the ankle, so I will add on more stitches, not 76, but uh, 84 stitches. However, if you would like a slipper with very or almost no heel, you should cast on less um, stitches. But let's, uh, let's move on to the cast on then because this pattern recommends a, a, a usual cast on and then in the end uh, sew this together uh, this will be the the back of the heel however i would like not to sew and to make the seam visible here on the final shoe so i make a turkish a double cast on and i will show you now when I work in a round, I usually have one needle being smaller in size on the left hand than the right hand. For me, then it, it's smoother to knit. And I have a wire length so that it is, I guess it's 80 centimeters, so it's long enough for me to make uh, this knitting of the slipper with a magic loop. So when I do the Turkish cast on, I have the size six millimeter, a, U, a US 10 on the top and a smaller one on the bottom. It also helps me when I do double cast on that this is kind of smaller because it may get a bit loose uh, when you do the cast on like this and then it evens out um, between uh, the two rows here. So now for the Turkish cast. I, on, on the smaller size being on the low here, I just make a small knot in order for me to not lose the, the end of the yarn. So it, it will not be an actual stitch, it's just to help me not to yeah, lose the end. So now I just do like this around the, both the needles and I make sure not to do like this to, to uh, 
get uneven uh, sizes, so not too tight because then you cannot split the, the needles apart later on, but then I just wind around here. So I need, as, as I need uh, 48 stitches, I need to do half of this uh, in rounds around the needle, so this would be 42. So now I do 42. Now I have 42. So in order for me to knit, I turn them and then I take out the, the big needle that I'm going to knit with. And then you can see I have the thread here. So I just add in my needle in the first here. It seems loose, but you know, it will add up. Then I just knit like, like I usually would. Two, three. Let me just go to the end and we can meet up and see what I'm doing with the last stitch before I turn to the other side. So now I've reached stitch number 42, so I just do like this. And, and this is, uh, this, this is uh, not, I told you I wouldn't use it, so I just slip it off the needle. So now it's hanging here. And then I, I pull the small size needle. So, and take out the bigger size needle again. And now I will just make sure before I knit that I have the correct number of stitches here, 42. I have the exact number of stitches. So now I have this hanging here. I just have to make sure that it stays down. And then I just knit, knit, knit the stitch. And as, as you can see, it is like this. I have to knit in the back loop in order to, to uh, make sure it is fastened. And then, yeah, I have soon knitted two rows. So, I've needed the last and I drop it and pull the smaller size needle, tug it in, pull out the bigger size needle and just continue knitting and make sure that it is rather tight in the end so there will be no hole. And then we just keep on knitting. This was the cast on. So let's meet when I have finalized the whole uh, heel cap. Step three, the decreases uh, and separation to the angle. So let's just look at this shoe. As I made it higher, I need to make decreases before I separate for each foot. So I do this by counting half of the number of stitches and put in a stitch marker. So as I had 48 stitches divided by four, this is 21 stitches. So now I count here. Two, four. A second. Twenty-one stitches, and then I put in a stitch marker, and I do the same thing on the other side. So this part will be be just here. So, and I continue knitting with this uh, magic loop technique. So I just go to the part in the middle here. Maybe we can fast forward a bit. So 
you can see now I'm here. I'm two stitches from the marker and uh, on this right side of the marker I knit two stitches together. Then I move the marker and I do slip slip knit, slip slip knit so that they will lean they will lean this way and this way from the marker. So when I fold the shoe, it will look like this. So this is the way I do it. And uh, I do this decrease uh, three times um, because due to the number of stitches I put on so that when I knit the actual foot it has the same number of stitches as recommended in the pattern uh, namely for 40 stitches so i do three decreases with one round without decreases in between so six rounds so let's meet up when i have made all the decreases I have now finalized the decreases on the heel cap here and I'm ready for step four, which is separation into two feet and casting on stitches in between here. Remember that this is not a part of the pattern. It is my modification because I wanted a higher heel cap. Okay, let's start. First of all, I need a second wire for the other foot. And I need to put these stitches on rest because I want to work on this foot first and cast on the stitches in between. So as I will use this needle for the cast on, on the stitches, I make sure that this one is a needle size, one smaller than the six millimeter I'm using. So I start putting before I cast on, I start putting these on rest. So let me just take the one shoe over here and I will meet you up again when I'm ready to cast on. So now I'm in the middle of the two decreases here. So I have put on the second wire. So now I get back to the place here where I need to do the cast ons. So we need to get everything in place. So here's the needle I have to knit on with. And here's the one in the other end of this foot. And this is the needle on the second foot. So I draw this needle from the second foot and put it below the one here because again I will use a double cast on however not the Turkish one because I have experimented a bit and I find that this one is the best one to ensure a firm and nice knit so you don't get two big holes here. So I take the thread and Pull it in between the needles, down below the lower needle, in between on the upper needle, lower needle, in between and around the upper needle, and so on it goes. And the pattern calls for six stitches to be cast on here in between. However, my girlfriend has a high wrist. So she wants it a bit wider, so I cast on eight stitches. So that is two times eight stitches, eight on each needle, two, four, six, eight. I have that now, two, four, six, seven, eight. So I need to make sure that the last one on the lower needle has come in between and on the lower part, because when I have to knit the first stitch here on the other side, It'll be below the lower needle to define a stitch down there and you can tuck it nice and firmly. So now I have the long wire here. So again, making sure it's quite firm here. I pull out the needle, the big one, so that I'm ready to connect over here. I 
hope you can see it. Just a second. And already now I need to, you know, divide for, for doing uh, the magic loop technique. So that's what I'm doing. I have the, the needle here. So here are the cast-ons. So now I push it through the first and do it very tightly very tightly the first three ones because if there is some unevenness you can you can uh, even it out because you have i would say firmed the the first five or six stitches uh, too much compared to the tension you have in the rest of your knitwear so now you just knit uh, to the round i will fast forward until i reach the part where i have cast on yeah i have now reached the step where the new cast ons are and seen from my side the the thread is in front of the upper needle here so i just knit it like i usually would one two three four five six, seven, and you can see it's, it looks right here, however not. So I just pick up the stitch like this, and now I can again break up for the Magic loop technique. Let me show you. I reached the point here for the other stitch, and luckily they were quite firm because now I just knit in here and use the thread from you saw before. You wouldn't imagine that it would be firm enough, but see. It is quite nice and firm. And I just have to do the same thing over here where it seems a bit looser because, yeah, I haven't evened it out yet like I did here. So now I can just continue working in the round. Uh, I'll show you once more before I start or continue working around and we can meet it up for the step five the angle decreases so i have now worked the six rounds which the pattern calls for after the cast on here on the angle separating the two feet and uh, they also tells you to add in stitch markers two stitches before the new cast-ons and two stitches after the new cast-ons. And as I added eight, there are now 12 stitches in between the markers. So what does the pattern then tell you to do? It tells you to work until the marker, slip the marker, knit one, and then knit two together. However, <laughs> I'm sorry, but I'm a sucker for symmetry. So I do the first one as an SSK and then I work the stitches in between until I have three stitches before the marker. Then I knit two together and knit one, slip marker and just knit the next, uh, knit the round and furthermore uh, four rounds in total five rounds as the pattern calls for and then i do just the same thing again i knit one ssk knit the stitches until three stitches left before the marker then i knit two together and knit one so this was step five step six the foot and by the 
foot, I mean the section between finalizing the decreases here at the ankle wedge until we are defining the toe. So I just finalized the 20 rows as described in the pattern. So now I'm ready for step seven, defining the toe. So I almost forgot to tell you that it's very important that you the, the beginning of the round is now at the center part of the shoe on the ankle. So it's just in between the de decreases you made. It's in order to create the symmetry of the toe. Let me just show you. So that it's just in the middle here you start. And you have the symmetry and the rounded. Here the pattern suggests to shift to double pointed needles. So I have found mine here. And these are laminated birch needles. Usually I wouldn't recommend to change the needle material in the middle of a garment. However, these are what I have and as it is at the toe, I think, well, it's okay. As I have uh, 40 stitches, I will now divide 10 per, per needle. Sorry for the, but um, yeah, let's start and just do like the pattern describes. So on the first row, we knit until there's uh, three stitches left of the 10. So I knit seven, then I knit two together and knit one. Let's do it once more. So I knit seven. So you, if you have another number of your needles, you just knit until you have three stitches left. And then you do knit two together and knit one. So. And knit one. And I guess you don't have to see me doing all of them. So we will just meet up again, starting round two of the total definition. Yeah, so now I'm doing the last decrease on the fourth needle. So I can remove this and just stick with the DPNs. Okay, so now it's round two of the toe decreases. So instead of decreasing at the end of the needle, I will decrease at start. And as I said before, I am a sucker for symmetry. So this time I will knit one and do SSK, so slip, slip, knit the two together, and then knit the rest, and again, knit one, slip, slip, knit. The pattern just says knit two together. It's, it's just me, I'm sorry. So, uh, let me finalize the two more and we will meet up at round three. Okay, so we have now needed two rounds of the toe definition and we need three more rounds. So round three is just like round one, four is like round two, and the fifth round is just a round without any decreases. And then we do it once more. I have now needed four rounds of decreases. So now I take one round without decreases. And then I have to repeat these five rounds once again. So at the beginning of the next section of decreases, I have six stitches on each of the needles. So I need three knit two together, knit one, we are soon there. So 
so all this needle clicking now it's knit one this is k and knit to the end knit one ssk and knit to the end so now i need to do one round without decreases and I started out with 10 stitches on each needle and now there is four. So, zoom done. So, now I'm at the end of the round again. So with four stitches on each needle now, I will, they, the pattern says knit two together, knit two together all the way around. But for the symmetry, I do the first two as SSK, then I knit two together, and the last one SSK, and knit two together. So now there are two stitches on every needle so now i have broken the yarn and i will use a hook to just put in the stitch or the, the yarn in between and close off so like this first needle away now it's easier to see what i do just put it inside. You can also use a needle, doesn't matter. But I like to use the, the crochet hook. It's actually very helpful in knitting, in many cases for picking up stitches and, and so on. There you go. The first foot is finalized, so now I just need to work in the round to make the second foot and as I already cast on the stitches I can just start the round here at the beginning of the cast on stitches and just yeah do the same. So let's meet up for the last step the felting process. We reach step eight, felting, the final step of producing these slippers. And uh, unfortunately, this uh, pattern from Sandness does not include a uh, felting. So you wouldn't know what to do. You have the before measurements, before the felting, and you have the measurements after felting. And then you have to figure out by yourself how to do in between. So before I show you my practical um, learnings and actually how I did it, let's just have a short look at what felting is and what influences felting. When using the wet felting process, four conditions are required. First of all, we need to wet the, the slipper and add some soap in order to change the pH value of the water from neutral to alkaline. We need a shift in temperature uh, going from hot to cold or cold to hot. And the last point is agitation. So these are the four conditions. But what is actually happening when you look at it at a physical level? Let's have a look at the microscopic picture of this uh, woolen fiber once again. Because when you add water and soap, these scales on the fiber will swell open. And when they swell open, it allows uh, these filaments to snag together and kind of interlock to start the felting process. And when you then make the temperature shift along with the agitation, this speeds up the felting process and causes uh, the slipper to shrink and then give you this very nice 
strong and dense um, uh, fabric that you need and want to be durable for walking around without creating holes underneath. So yeah, this is in short uh, what happens. But how would you then know uh, what to do with these parameters? What would be the time uh, to felt, the temperature, uh, which kind of soap, how much soap, the woolen fiber in itself, and so on and so on. I've searched the internet to find the answer, but I can see now that you cannot find one solution because there are so many variables. So my considerations about the variables. First of all, uh, the soap. Uh, I use uh, woolen soap. I don't want a soap with enzymes uh, cutting the fibers. Um, I still need the woolen soap. So talking about the machine, there's the woolen program on the machine and all other programs. And uh, modern technology of washing machines is fabulous. So they have actually created a woolen program at which they keep uh, the temperature the same. So it, they make sure that the washing temperature and the rinsing water temperature is the same exactly in order to avoid felting and pilling. However, we want felting now, so I won't use the woolen program. I will use the other program where typically uh, they keep the rinse water uh, being the temperature of the tap water coming into the house. So in Denmark, it will be typically around 13 to 15 degrees centigrade. And if I set uh, the machine for uh, 40 uh, degrees centigrade, then I will have a temperature shift of around 25 degrees. And then, as I said, I will do it incremental. So I will start with half an hour and see where it gets me. So shouldn't we look at the practical side of it now? And let's see what happens. Let's start having a look at the slippers before I start the actual felting process. So here are both uh, in the pair and they are kind of, yeah, supposed to look like this also in size. And this is a size uh, 37 in uh, European sizes. And this corresponds to a US size six and a half and a UK size four and a half. So yeah, you may think that it looks a bit weird here, but there's a reason because I've made a small modification to the pattern. So let me just put one foot into the other one as it's supposed to. Then you can see what it is I'm doing. Yeah, let's first look here. You can see here the, the wedge over the ankle and the modification I've made is this kind of elevated uh, here on the, <clears throat> on the angle. And this is why, you know, I've made decreases here too to get it a bit higher around, yeah, the angle here on the foot. So, but let's let's look at the sizes because this is important. Um, when you measure this slipper, it's 40 centimeters from end to end. This is quite long because it's supposed to end around 25 centimeters. So it's quite some shrinkage. So compared to the last felting process I made, I may have to do more rounds, uh, but let's see, because I do this in an incremental way, starting looking, um, felting a bit more looking in order to reach the target size I want. Let's move to the washing machine. We are now here in our common laundry room with the slippers and I will add them to the machine. Please make sure that you have unfolded the slippers because if they are folded, it will give you an uneven 
felting process and in product and that's what not what you want so i just add them in and then i add an, a towel in order to help the felting process because this will along with the shoe help the bashing let's call it spanking and i add an old one because i don't know whether or not <clears throat> this yarn will bleed so and now let's look at the program i'll start up here so usually of course i use the wool program but this is gentle so this is not what we want because we want the felting so i pick the the speed program the quick program and i pick 40 degrees centigrade this will be half an hour so let's have a look of the spin cycle this is 1200 rpms rotations per minute and uh, i learned and shared in an earlier episode that the higher the spin uh, speed will help the moment of inertia to get the garment towards the wall of the barrel and hence reduce pilling and felting but now we, we want felting so let's reduce the spin speed because i know that i will make more rounds of this quick wash so it's not the purpose of draining the shoe for water in order for it to, to dry later on so let's pick 800 and the last thing is oh the <clears throat> detergent and i use the wool detergent this time not with citrus as usual but this will be with with cherries let's see how this is and i add a little bit here i don't know how much it's yeah half a cup here okay so this is the reason why i don't use the auto dose on the machine because i think it's too much detergent so i check that it is off off so now we can start the machine now the slippers are here on the table so first of all let's do the measurement it was 40 centimeters before and after this first round it is 36 let's see if they have felt it in the same way 36 yes that's perfect for one and just uh, let's focus on the fabric you can see here that it's more dense now and if we compare to the finished felted shoe here you cannot see the stitch definition you still can here so uh, this will also um, speak for more felting rounds but let's look i have noted down here that when we started felting 40 centimeters and after the first round 36 centimeters this means 10 percent shrinkage so we have a target of around 25 centimeters so this means that approximately three rounds more of felting in the machine uh, of 30 minutes per per round is needed before we end up with the shoe in the correct length uh, but let's see if the shrinkage actually is is the same for each felting round so i will get back to you once it has been given one more felting round we are now here after the second round and something interesting happened the first different thing i noticed was when i opened the door to the washing machine there was more foam so somehow i must have added more detergent i guess and it has also shrinked more, but let's have a look at the measurements. So we started at 40 after the first round, 36, and now it is 30, 30 and a half. So let's look at the numbers. It corresponds to 17% of shrinkage. So if it shrinks just as much in the next round, then we just need one more round. But Again, let's have a look at the fabric because actually it has the look of a finished shoe now. 
it is quite dense and it yeah uh, when i sit in the sofa i will i will discuss uh, what i'm probably made wrong with with the shoe sizing here but anyway let me give it a round more but my concern now is that it shouldn't shrink that much in this piece because then it gets too small for the foot and for this particular shoe i wanted it wider here over the ankle because uh, my uh, my friend my girlfriend has a high ankle so she wanted it a bit wider than this one so nail biting the last turn in the machine yeah so here we are after the third round of the felting process and I cannot tell you how happy I am because look at this 25 or 25 and a half centimeters long that's just what we wanted and uh, what did I do different in the third round let's have a look at the numbers I didn't add soap and in this last round I increased the uh, spinning cycle to 1600 rpms instead of the 800 in the other rounds so this gave a shrinkage percentage of 15 which was yeah just spot on so the next step now is the blocking process where i put this inside the other toe and block it and fit it to become a shoe i will now try to block these and i found again these uh, shoe blockers yeah meant for the leather shoes and you can see this is for european size 36 to 38 so they will fit when i try to block them out with those so here we are now they are blocked and finalized ready to dry and it was not that laborious and tedious as as i had feared so I will just show you what I did uh, and hope that it will kind of act the same way as it did just before. So what I did was I had the inner foot here and I took the foot blocker, I did that like this, took the foot blocker and kind of eased it around the blocker and it actually went like this yeah I, a bit a bit more hard but just like this and then yeah and then i took out the blocker and in with the hand to get it to even out or get flat and then I wore the shoe. Now first I did like this to make it nice and round and equal in size. And then I put on the shoes and walked a couple of rounds in the living room to kind of get them to yeah, get smooth around your foot. So here you go, let's Let's just compare with the old shoe because this was, it was meant to be wider here and a bit lower on the ankle. And I can tell you it is because it feels a bit too big to me. So that's fine. And she wanted it a bit bigger, than, bigger or longer than mine. It doesn't matter that it's a bit too big. So actually my feet stops here, just like this shoe. So. I guess it's fine and actually when using them they will kind of fit to your feet so now I could consider whether or not to do something to right left and right or add a flower or do something so yeah it's been a bit darker but hopefully you can see see it anyway Let's meet up later. I am now back in the sofa and as you can see, it is 
yeah, I would say still pitch black. And this is what happens when you make real time uh, video uh, filming of, of the knitting and the felting going in a long process. But it has been very fun for me. But um, now to the learnings. So first of all, let me clarify if it has been confusing. In this video, I have made two pairs of slippers. I knitted one pair and I felted another pair. So the felting was the first pair I made and I intended it to be size uh, 37 EU size. However, I did something wrong and ended up with a size 39. <laughs> so what happened? Yeah, I figured it out because actually I knitted too many rows in this section of, uh, of the slipper so that I ended up with 40 centimeters instead of yeah what was required in the pattern. So as I had two requests for two girlfriends, one in size 37 and one in size 39, then I could just shift the second pair to be a size 37 and this is here now. So this is the one I needed. I have also felted this one and ain't it nice. So yeah, mm. I think they are nice and I already gifted away the first pair and uh, she liked it very, very much. So yeah, okay, back to the learnings. So I've tried to put it down here for you to see in kind of a schematic form so that we could see if there is some kind of reproducibility uh, uh, in these uh, trial runs. So having two pairs, this, this gave me six rounds. And actually in the second pair, uh, I was uh, better prepared so that I kept the variables fixed. And I could see this on the results uh, so that it was around the same shrinkage in round one and two being around 15%. And in the third round, it was 11%. And in the third round, if you can recall, I didn't add the soap and I changed the, the uh, spinning speed to the high speed of the machine. So I guess this kind of, of wool will, with 40 degrees centigrade, <laughs> half an hour and 15 milliliters of this specific soap will give me around 15% in, in shrinkage in length. So yeah. What would I do differently the next time? I would probably dare to go up to uh, 50 degrees centigrade and one hour and see what happens. Um, um, yeah, I think I would. Uh, so, however, my advice to you when you start knitting these slippers, go slow so you don't end up with a baby shoe and learn more about your wool and your machine, your soap and so on. You can always put it in the machine again, but if they are too small, it's irreversible and <laughs> you cannot make it back. Some say you can add a softener and uh, hit, uh, in this way cut, uh, cut the fibers, but yeah, I don't think though, it, not with a slipper. So uh, yeah. I guess this was all for today. I uh, hope you got some uh, inspiration or ideas out of it. And it could be some practical help for you knitting a slipper. Um, I had fun, I can tell you. <laughs> I love doing experiments. Although with the six rounds, you couldn't say that uh, you could have significance in numbers. Uh, but uh, anyway, it is fun and I will definitely do more, uh, not just now, I need to continue with my, my uh, Christmas knitting. But uh, good luck with your slippers and uh, hopefully I will see you soon in the next episode being more normal <laughs> with whips and FOs and so on. So until the next time, have a nice knitting life and uh, Roger Noah from English Knitting Lab. Color me happy. Bye bye.